If you look at a situation where you have a bank like, we'll say, Anglo, the government are looking to put 22 m m billion, not million, billion into a bank uh, that has a completely uncertain future, has lent nothing since, since the guarantee scheme was put in place. And side by side with that, you're looking for on average about 60 million a year for regeneration. And what that would provide to the people living in the regeneration areas and what it would provide in terms of employment, it would provide 109 million a year in terms of flowing into the actual the real economy here in Limerick. And it's immensely frustrating. Yes, there has, there's a lack of a support by government and a lack of political will in terms of looking after Limerick in the Midwest. And from my perspective, Limerick has become the forgotten city. Funding needs to be provided. People in the regeneration is need to see projects going ahead. To date, all they've seen is they've seen the knocking of over 400 houses. And I suppose I'm concerned about particularly obviously the people living in the regeneration areas of my Ross, South Hill, St Mary's Park and Balnacora Weston. Uh, they're, I suppose, they've lost faith in the project. That needs to be restored. I think where the credibility will come is a plan has now gone in in the first phase. That's now weak government. Uh, I intend bringing it up in the doll uh, this week to find out exactly um, where government are with the plan, when they will approve it and when they will fund it. Uh, it has now gone from being a 1.6 billion plan in terms of government funding to 924 million and it's gone from being a 10 year plan overall to a 15 year plan. When you look at regeneration and I see a lot of elderly people living in the regeneration areas uh, uh, that have lived there all their lives and they've had a situation where, where three years ago they were promised that this was going ahead and they literally gave their support and gave their, their trust to the government that this would be delivered on. And now they find a situation where they don't know whether it's going ahead or not. They've been three years in limbo, they've had houses knocked down beside them, uh, they've seen neighbours move and this just isn't good enough. It will act as an enormous job stimulus for Limerick. Um, in the revised plan that's gone in for the first phase uh, you're talking about uh, four and a half thousand jobs being created. Once again what we have here is we have the government giving a lot of lip service to Limerick but completely short on delivery and the people won't be fooled, the people want to see they see a report coming out uh, headed by someone of the calibre of Dennis Brosnan and they know that what's in the report is practical and implementable and once again the government are effectively hoping that it will that the objections will go away. They won't. I will continue to bring it up. We have over 21,000 people now on the unemployment register in Limerick. We have 14.2% uh, unemployment, well above the national average of 13.4. Uh, we have a lot of young people that have lost their jobs under the age of 25. And I feel at this stage that the government must honour their commitment. So the two things I will be looking for is, number one, that they will approve the first phase, Funding will be put on stream, they will see live physical projects before the end of the year and furthermore that the overall master plan, because this is the first phase, that the overall master plan will be approved by cabinet and that's absolutely vital. We need government policy to get credit flowing to the small business sector here uh, in Limerick uh, which are, are starved of cash and we have a situation where they see at 43 billion being put into NAMA, they see another 32 billion being put into the banks and they see credit, private sector credit drying up day by day. People of Limerick, uh, if we get the funding, we will make sure that things happen. But if you're not getting government funding, it's impossible to actually move forward. And yet people side by side see a situation whereby you have 1.5 million going into a pension fund for Richie, for Richie Boucher in Bank of Ireland, who was the deputy CEO, he's now been promoted within the same bank. You have a situation where you have one million of a bonus paid to Michael Fingler and Irish Nationwide Building Society with a 27 million of a pension fund. And people say, what is going on here? I'm here to represent the people of Limerick, many who are unemployed, and an awful lot of businesses that are under enormous pressure. We've had two businesses going in Limerick per week since the start of this year. We continue to have more. A lot of that due to lack of credit. A lot of that due to the fact that people have lost their jobs and the spending power has gone out of the, the, the Limerick and the economy here. And the only way we can deal with that is to have a proper job strategy implemented. 
and that's about government resources, that's about government will, and I will continue to bring that matter up in the Dáil until we get a result. When you look at, you know, Munster Rugby, when you look at uh, what's happened here in Limerick in terms of people on the ground, voluntary associations and so forth, we have the resources here to be a fantastic region, to be a fantastic city, but what we need here is we need government funding, we need, and effectively, to show us the money. If you take Anglo itself, uh, the, the government put in 8 billion into Anglo in January and that's the equivalent of the Department of Education annual budget. The figures are frightening, people have a right to appear absolutely frustrated. We had a fundamentally different approach in terms of the government in terms of how to deal with the banking crisis. We believed that uh, the professional investors who invested in the bank should share in the burden in the pain as well. The government effectively, Everton fell in the taxpayer. And the taxpayer is now faced with a situation where you have NAMA with 43 billion of assets of unknown value. We've still, we still have the business plan from NAMA itself. Uh, furthermore, you have the situation with 32 billion going into the banks. 70% of that is going into Anglo-Irish Bank, uh, which effectively we feel should be looked at in terms of being wound down over time in an orderly fashion. We would set up a good bank out of Anglo and effectively allow the, the bad bank or the toxic debts that the professional investors would effectively share in the pain there and effectively take rather than it all going up front in the taxpayer. NAMA will not get credit flowing. Uh, an eminent uh, businessman like Willie Slattery, who said of, of uh, a large uh, financial institution in Dublin, a uh, farmer uh, worked formerly in the central bank stated that NAM is crazy and it will probably cost 15 to 16 billion more than if uh, we'd say an alternative solution had become for the banks themselves who resolve in terms of toxicity along the lines of what we were proposing. When the original draft plan was produced, uh, given last October, and we debated it in the all, they were stating that 40% of the loans were, were cash generating. We're now finding that a third, so two thirds of loans going into NAMA of the first tranche are not, gener are not cash generating. That places a further burden on the taxpayer. But I think our focus at the moment is that the government would see that NAMA is going to be an extremely unfair burden on the taxpayer. Uh, you will have a situation where NAMA will be the single biggest, I think, property portfolio entity in the world. The penny hasn't dropped. If they don't deal with the whole issue of joblessness and providing jobs, we, we face a situation where we will have lost generations, immigration will continue, and we as a country uh, will not progress. And that's something we in Fine Gael will not allow to happen.